thank you. Uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker. He was elected to his current office in January of 2002 after serving as a city councilman since 1998. He is finishing his third term as mayor. Born in Boston and growing up in a military family, himself being a U.S. Navy veteran, he has lived many places in the United States. Pete first came to Auburn in 1980 to work as a banker and find a permanent home here in Auburn for his wife Kathy and their two daughters. He has been involved in our community in many ways. The Noon Lions, Auburn Food Bank, Miss Auburn Scholarship Program, and of course our Auburn Area Chamber of Commerce serving as past president. He's on the Green River Community College Board of Trustees, past president of the Suburban Cities Association, representing over 900,000 people in our area. He's a member past chair of the Valley Communications, that's our 911 system, member past chair of the South County Area Transportation Board, representing all of the South County cities, founder of Valley Cities, representing the nine cities in the Puyallup, White, and Green River Valleys, member past vice chair of King County's Regional Policy Committee, member Economic Development Board of the Puget Sound Regional Council, past member of the Growth Management Committee, member Pierce County Mayor's Cities and Towns, member Pierce County Regional County Committees, member of the U.S. Conference for Mayors, Transportation Committee, uh, International Trade Committee, original member of the U.S. Mayor's Stimulus Committee on Infrastructure, and also on the Amtrak Advisory Board. He's always been active in our local uh, organizations and encourages others to do the same. You only get what you give. If you're not at the table, then you're probably on the menu. <laughs> Please help me welcome Mayor Pete Lewis. Thank you very much. While that, I was being introduced, my wife, Kathy, turned to me and said, no wonder you look so tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this has always been an exciting time. I, I joke about the state of the city because, from my perspective, it's pretty much the bo most boring speech I give. But it's exciting in a different way because of all the people it touches and all the things that we've done together. Now, today, we're joined by a, a, a number of mayors and council members from other cities, and I really appreciate their coming, uh, especially uh, Mayor Law from Renton here, sitting down front. And the reason I appreciate that is because he is one of those regional leaders. He's the current chair of Sound Cities Association, and he really understands the necessity for moving forward in partnerships and coalitions. Uh, I know that with our, within our own city, our Deputy Mayor Nancy Backus has been doing much the same thing, reaching out across the community. We need to understand that the community that we're in is the Puget Sound community and beyond. It's also a national community. And we do need to be at those different tables. That phrase, at the table or on the menu, was, was first coined by the Chamber, which I've never forgotten. But it's absolutely necessary that we always remember that. I'll say it again, but for almost 100 years, the citizens of Auburn paid out to everyone else from the county, the state, the federal government. Now we're starting to get money coming back in. It is because we're at every table. It is because any place where there's any part, anything of influence, we are always there. And it's not just the members of the council, although they are there, but it's also members of the community. And I don't ever want to forget that. I have a couple of announcements to make, but before I start, I want to start with an announcement. I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank Emerald Downs for being a great member of this community and all the work they've done, and thank them for what they're doing here today. But that's not all. This summer, Emerald Downs will be bringing a new and exciting community event to Auburn. It's called EMD 3 on 3, a basketball extravaganza that will take place on August 10th and 11th. The event is the brainchild of Bob Frazier, Emerald Downs Vice President of Operations. Bob, where are you? Raise your hand. 
This is a marvelous idea that he came up with. You see, Bob went to Hoopfest in Spokane, a basketball event that attracts over 27,000 visitors. And he thought, why can't we do the same thing here in Auburn? And with, because of Bob's enthusiasm and skills, EMD 3-on-3 three -three is going to happen right here in the north parking lot of Emerald Downs. The city is signed on as a sponsor. So is Regency, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Budweiser, Coca-Cola, Longhorn Barbecue, which I know is here today as well, Oddfellows, same thing, and many more. There aren't very many places left for sponsors. If you want to be, to have an opportunity to be an original sponsor of what I think is going to be a regional event, you need to see Bob before the day is done, I would suggest. Now, as people like Bob and Emerald Downs and so many more of you in the room that have inspired me over the years, and it's an honor to be here again to present the state of the city. I wanted to talk about 2012 because it was a year to remember and it's a place for us to start. But in doing that, I'm going to advance to 2013. I get to make an announcement today. Has anybody here heard of the Kavanaugh Block in downtown Auburn, known as the gravel parking lot? The Kavanaugh property has been purchased. It will close on March 11th. How about that? We're talking about a six-story building. It'll be set up for apartments or condos when the market ever comes back for condos. It's got retail development in it, and there are more blocks to follow. But the first one to watch is March 11th as we begin to build another building in downtown. And as we've all been waiting for, the cranes are coming back to downtown Auburn. So look forward to that. In 2012, there were 247 new businesses started here in the city of Auburn. And more than 1,200 new jobs were created here last year in the heart of the Great Recession. Some of the notable new businesses and expansions included Coastal Farm and Ranch. Now, they remodeled the old Walmart building. They spent over $20 million on that remodel. The regional hospital cooperative service administration laundry facility. It does the laundry for all the regional hospitals. It's a $26 million project that you can see just down the street from here going up, and there's over 185 new market rate jobs available to the people in the city of Auburn. 185 living wage jobs. AutoZone opened another store. Terry Homes 2 is under construction. The voters passed that $100 million downtown Auburn high school project that we'll be breaking ground on in another, work, another week. February 24th. February 24th. I'm going fishing in a few days. I have to be back in time for the groundbreaking. There were 74 separate Boeing construction projects going on in the city of Auburn last year. And that had a cum cumulative construction value of $31 million. Glimsher, that super mall to us, and it's soon to be called the Outlet Collection, is creating a regional shopping destination with a $35 million renovation, and it will bring a thousand new jobs to the city of Auburn. Orion Industries, and Orion is here, and we appreciate you being here. Orion Industries is moving its headquarters to Auburn with 225 technical manufacturing jobs and a $24 million construction project that will be underway this year. Green River Community College has begun construction of the $34 million trades building, all taking place in the city of Auburn. Going through the year, we saw openings of more new businesses like Eagle Leather, Turning Point Studios, Skills, AIM Aerospace, Ply Gem, Seattle Food Company, North American Pipe and Steel, Apollo Southwest, LMI Aerospace. Com communities, cities, 
aren't built around residential property tax. Cities are created around business and maintained by the taxes that business pay. With the exception of a few communities, perhaps Hollywood, you can't live off of residential property tax. Cities are built around businesses, and they always have been. The quality of life that we all want in our city, public safety, entertainment, are paid for by a combination of property tax and sales tax, with business being the foundation upon which cities are built. Individually, our average income keeps rising as a community. Auburn's median household income for 2012 was $59,091. And Mayor Booth, I know you're particularly proud of that as well because it wasn't that long ago that we were in the 30s and the 40s. We've changed considerably over the last 20 years, and Mayor Booth was a part of that change. Single-family home sales are up for two years running. Inventories of sales of housing sales are decreased by more than 44%. And the average list price are currently up at 249,000. That's up more than 6% over the previous year. There were 4,170 business licenses issued last year in the city of Auburn. There were 23 commercial building permits totaling $13,063,000. Auburn surpassed all other cities in King or Pierce County with the highest number of single-family building permits issued since 2004. That's 420 building permits pulled for a total construction value of over $86 million. Attracting and nurturing business here at home is how we have been coming out of this recession. To do that, we established a mayor's task force of more than 20 local business leaders to help create and guide the activities of Auburn's Urban Center for Innovation Partnership, or IPZ. The IPZ received certification and designation as Washington State's 15th IPZ, and ours is unique because it's the only city-based IPZ in the state of Washington. Your city of council approved business incentives to help restart our community. community. Sister Cities has gone back to its roots. We've always had children exchange, cultural exchange. But over the decades, the Sister Cities group, which began in the 60s, had forgotten to cultivate business connections, business exchange. We created websites and links for all of our sister cities through regular monthly meetings and an active participation Relations have been established and reestablished with our Japanese Chamber of Commerce, the Korean Chamber of Commerce. Business introductions just recently with our sister cities group led to the purchase of a 165,000 square foot building here in Auburn and the recruitment of the Seattle Food Company from Seattle. Our Auburn Municipal Airport is in the black and growing. <clears throat> to support that growth, we've begun work on a new Auburn Master airport master plan, a new master plan for a 21st century Auburn airport. We've developed and published a comprehensive list of local, state, federal business incentives for ongoing business attraction and for specific marketing of Auburn as the place to conduct business. We assisted. I wish Councilmember Wagner could have made it today because I wanted to hear him say this. Now, we assisted, and I want to say again, we assisted Councilmember Wagner, as he cemented relationships and ties with WSU with the launch and final display of the IDEX project. We've used the IDEX project to pro promote Auburn as a city where innovation is applauded and we are, where we are ready to do business. We worked with Councilmember Reichert's office to establish an official office right in downtown Auburn, the biggest city in his district. And thank you very much for having done that. We also work on the human service sector, working with private industry. We assisted in the redevelopment of a blighted downtown apartment complex with fresh new market affordable units. Citizens of Auburn need affordable housing. We have more affordable housing right now than most com communities in the Puget Sound region, but it's time to upgrade the housing stock we have. Working with our 
partners. We began that work last year. Now, many of us started off poor, or now more politically correct, low income. My wife Kathy and I started off poor. We had a dollar a day for meals, and we used to have spaghetti rent parties for each other to make the rent payment. There's no shame in being poor, but shame on owners that do not provide safe and secure housing in our town, and we will continue to take those steps necessary under the law to keep our citizens safe. Thank you. When we saw a number of abandoned, uncared for houses increasing in our city, we took action. Your council passed ordinances speeding up the code enforcement process. When we found abandoned, uncared for houses being transferred from lender to lender, we got new ordinances from council to allow us to lien properties, stopping further transfers until our city properties were cleaned up. We decided to let the people know where those uncared for properties were. So we created the abandoned property wall of shame on our city website. And on that website, we list each house with a picture, with the property address, with the name of the lender, with the phone number of the lender, so that people can call and make comments and also find out how they might be able to buy the property. We will make every effort to ensure that abandoned properties are cared for in the city of Auburn until that such time as buyers can be found for those properties. We began work after almost 20 years of grant writing, and I know Mayor Booth remembers this well. We began work on the M Street underpass. And it seemed to take forever, but we also opened the AB corridor, providing a new north-south route from the transit center to the northern limits of our city. Our departments and our council members and grant writers working together brought in 26 grants totaling $16,400,000 back to the citizens of Auburn in 2012. <laughs> There's another event that I think everybody might have forgotten, but I sure as heck have, have not. We took down the sandbags along the Green River. <laughs> Many of us thought that that would never take place. But while that was being done, one of the interesting things about it, and it just happened to take place about the same time, we got a check in for $400,000 because we put a claim in with FEMA for a little storm we had last year with ice and snow. And we got $400,000 back from the federal government to reimburse us for our efforts. We have to talk about our schools as well, and that seems somehow strange in the state of the city speech because on the West Coast, uh, unlike the East Coast and the Midwest, the cities don't run the, the schools, and I know every mayor in our region is very thankful for that fact. <laughs> but our children's academic achievement continues to increase and excel. We've gotten over 20 state and national academic recognition awards in the last year, including the most recent one, the College Board's recognition of the Auburn School District for Advanced Placement National Honor Roll, one of only 53 in the entire United States. The City of Auburn, you go right ahead. The City of Auburn was one of among seven South King County cities and the City of Seattle to be named an All-American City. The National Civic League was so impressed that we were able to work together on the roadmap project to improve reading proficiency among young students in our cities. But we went a lot further than that. This group worked together on a terrifyingly large federal grant application written jointly with the roadmap project. There were more than 600 groups that started the process. There were over 300 groups that sent in grant applications. There were more than 60 groups who were finalists. There were a number of smaller grants, but across the United States, 
There are only two that were approved for the maximum amount under the Race to the Top program, and we were one of the two groups for $40 million. I'd like to be really clear about this. This was a tremendous collaboration that was brought together between superintendents of the schools, education associations, school boards, mayors, educators, community-based organizations, and parents in the Auburn, Federal Way, Highline, Kent, Renton, Seattle, and Tukwila districts. And I have to say that Renton provided the meeting space for most of the meetings. And I thank you. That meant I didn't have to go to Seattle. <laughs> Here in Auburn, there is an individual that stands out, and that's our superintendent of the Auburn School District, and he is indeed super. Kip Heron and his insistence on the early learning program, which first started at Pioneer and Terminal Park, led to an application by the Auburn School District, the City of Auburn, and the Kent School District for funding of the early learning program, which led to great success for our children. Our children in some of the highest uh, community, uh, federal lunch program, highest turnover rate, highest and most diverse schools, have the highest reading rate in the state of Washington, and we've surpassed Bellevue this last year for our kids. <laughs> we have every reason to celebrate that Auburn as a city and then our partnerships are pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps, and our children will be the recipients of what we are doing for them. What a marvelous thing to be able to do. And that's not all. We also have a little school up on the hill, or Harvard on the hill, Green River Community College. And you might think I'm a little biased about now, uh, being on the board of trustees. It really did open my eyes to a whole new world, and I was so appreciative to be able to do that. But the city has been working in increasing and solidifying its partnership with Green River Community College for over a decade. Our increased degree of cooperation with the college has already had tangible results. Besides the college business connection with its city colleges that we're already working on across the world, we're partnering with the college on new concepts for the Auburn Municipal Airport. Our partnership with Green River also brought other noticeable results close to home. Auburn was having a terrible time, like every other community around Puget Sound, with wire theft. Well, we got together with Auburn, the City of Auburn's Maintenance and Operations Group, and Green River Community College. And we had over losses at that time of over $150,000 from wire theft and replacement costs. Now, the college welding program got together with our folks and in 15 days, they wired up, or wired up, they, they spot welded 1,833 junction boxes, which ended our wire theft losses. I talk a lot about partnerships. We always need to remember our very first partnership is with Muckleshoot. 20% of our city is on the reservation. Our lives, our peoples are intertwined, as is our future. Let us never forget that we are a part of each other, and together we will move forward into the future. We have a partnership in our community with all of our different cultural groups that adds so much to what makes Auburn unique. We have been meeting to bring together all of our people, and we will continue that great work. And, and Deputy Mayor, I want to thank you for your your assistance to me in working with all those cultural groups. Uh, Nancy Backus has been, been out there and talking to the groups and making sure that their voices are heard in our community. As I said before, we brought into, into being new organizations, the first of which was the Innovative Partnership Zone and the Southeast Area Coalition for Housing, or SEARCH. And we have some of the members of SEARCH here. Auburn didn't do that on its own. We weren't first. We just worked together with all the Southeast cities. So the cities of Auburn, Algona Pacific, Edenclaw, Maple Valley, Black Diamond, and Covington are now working together for many issues, from housing, economic development, 
transportation, all the things that we all have to work on together. Because when you think about it, much of the transportation, much of our issues are all the same. From one of those cities to the next, we're all intertwined in what we do and we are connected there. These partnerships are of, of vital importance to us. And you heard some of the list of some of the organizations that I belong to, but council does as well. We continue to partner with Valley Cities, South County Cor Correctional Entity, South King County Transportation Board, Sound City Association, Pierce County Cities and Town, Regional Access Mobility Partnership, that's RAMP, Pierce County Regional Council, Puget Sound Regional Council, Association of Washington Cities, National League of Cities, and the U.S. Conference of Mayors. These partnerships and more are bringing value back to our city in the form of dollars, knowledge, as well as a greater ability to make our needs known to every single level of government. We've heard comments in the past about the money that we're, is coming in. We're just getting back. It's taxpayer money. We should be getting it anyway. That's true. The difference is, as I've said before, for more than a century, it just went out. It's time for that money to be coming back in to our citizens, to our needs throughout our community. Now, Auburn businesses have been earning awards, too, and there's a couple that really stood out to me. One of the first ones had to do with Zones. Zones is the largest minority employer business in the state of Washington. The University of Washington awarded its inaugural billion-dollar business award to Zones of Auburn. How about that? Right here in our community, right across the way from Supermall. Aero Controls earned the Silver Boeing Performance Excellence Award. Aero Controls is a local Auburn company with over 175 employees. Here's another one. Scar Ford is among an elite group of Ford and Lincoln dealerships, which you probably knew already. Now, they get an opportunity to receive a President's Award by the Ford Motor Company. Only three other Ford dealerships in the state of Washington earned a President's Award. It's SCARF's fourth time, to give you an idea of the value of that company. We are working together to keep our city safe. Safe. You, your city government has been in a partial state of economic emergency since 2002. My very first State of the City speech talked about the fact that we were in recession. We've now gone through the decade of initiatives only to be faced by the Great Recession. So we've got, got bookends. We got it from one place and then we got it from the other. And as usual, we were in the middle. We were in a recession then and year after year, we faced those new directives that took money away from our city. But the work still had to be done. The service needs still had to be met. Since 2006, the number of employees at the city of Auburn has dropped from 488 to 395. At the same time, the city's population has increased from 48,955 to 71,240. The police department in our city has the highest number of employees, 115 or 38% of the total general fund budget dollars. But police officers are not the only employees delivering public safety. You have to think about the folks, the 35 employees in the water division, the 23 in the sanitary sewer division, the 27 employees in the stormwater division. These are all separate funds paid by ratepayers or taxpayers. The street division has another 13 employees in that cr critical area of quality of life and public safety. For a total in our employees of 213, or 55% of your taxpayer dollars. Every one of those people are vital to the public service. Over the last six years, we've asked your city employees to do more with less, including taking mandatory 40-hour furloughs without pay in 2011 or 12 or pay increases. They are a dedicated, talented bunch of public service servants, and I'm very proud of the work that they do every day in our city. In our budget for 2013 and 2014, your council decided to spend down some of the cumulative reserves 
to keep all of your dedicated people here working at the City of Auburn with you. It'll be tough for the next couple of years. Going through that budget as an ex-banker, and I know our finance director is here as well, trying to figure out how we could make this work is very difficult. We'll have to continue to keep a watch on the budget as there are a few extra dollars anywhere, but we will provide for the public safety and our quality of life. I want to comment further about that because at this time in our nation's history, there's a lot of talk about how government is overspending and how so much is waste. I invite anyone to come in and to find those extra dollars that are ongoing dollars, not one-time money, but ongoing dollars that can fix all the problems of the city, of any city. And I see the mayors here nodding their heads. We have gotten to the point in cities across the state of Washington where the cupboards are bare, where there's very few, if any, reserves, and we have to continue the level of service regardless, but it's becoming more and more difficult. If you have a way to fix a problem, come forth and say so. The books will be open to you. I'll take that answer. I'll put it in my update. I'll put it in the paper. But it's got to work. It's got to be real dollars. It's got to count. And it's got to make a difference. But if you're ready, so am I. Our quality of life and public safety issue has been the red light camera program, that, which is sponsored by the state legislature through the cities of Auburn Lakewood in 2006. At that time, we saw the deaths, the dismemberments, the broken families caused by those terrible T-bone accidents that took place where, inter where motorists were hitting people at red lights. Since that time, infractions at those intersections are down. Infractions at those intersections are down. Accidents of any kind at those intersections are down. There have been no more T-bone tragedies at those intersections since we put in the cameras. Further than that, your council, and you know how highly I think of them, wanted to make sure that everyone recognized that this was not just another ploy by a city to get money. So from the very beginning, they dedicated any extra earnings from the red light enforcement to local traffic safety improvements. That's in neighborhoods. That's where the money has come for the speed bumps and the traffic signs and the striping in the neighborhoods, everything that we could do to keep neighborhoods and the community safe. It didn't go to the general fund and just, just to be used for anything. It was, it was set aside in a separate fund to make sure that neighborhood safety was the primary goal. Now, we haven't done as many of those projects lately. That's because the revenues are down. That's because the income to the city is down. And the city council is quite happy with that because no one is dying, and that was our goal. No one is dying because of what they did as a council, and I applaud them every step of the way. We transferred over from a local municipal court to an interlocal agreement with the King County Court District. Council worked hard on that, and it appears at this date the savings to our taxpayers could amount by 2015 to over $3 million a year. While we have little money in our budget to spare, we do have resourceful employees and council members who are working all the time to find the funding, funds that we need for the city we want to have. But a city is more than roads, stop signs, and storefronts. We must build for our future at every chance we get. And your city has been a good steward to the people's money while at the same time seizing every single opportunity to make it our future brighter. We bought a lake with grants from the state of Washington. It will soon be the first park on West Hill. Working together with the state of Washington and King County, we put together two parcels and now have the beach area along the Green River. We added a community garden to our inventory by the Auburn School District Administration Building. It seems so long ago now, but out of that terrible ice and snowstorm that created the loss of hundreds of trees in the parks came the new tree sculptures that we were created in some of our hardest hit parks. 
Those sculptures are a reminder of what we lost while beautifying our parks for the future. I mentioned that we were a 2012 All-American City. But did you know that this is our fourth year in a row that we've been named a Playful City USA because of the abundance of our parks and what we have for our children. And we also received our seventh Tree City Award for planting new trees in our city. Can you believe it was only last year that we completed the promenade project? Also, it was last year when we completed our new activity center gymnasium at Let's Go of Campus. The gym is now busy with 3,277 hours of program time throughout 2012, making a great place for our community to go. <laughs> Councilmember Pelosi, we appreciate this. Out at our golf course, we increased play by using marketing tools with Amazon Local, Google Offers, Cyber Coupons, and Facebook. We created a new website with improved functionality, including an online pro shop, online tr tee times, online tournament entries, and tournament results. If you're a golfer and want to save money on rounds of golf, be sure to sign up for Auburn Golf Course's e-specials. I'm very proud of our council, as I always talk about, our art commission and all the volunteers that had a part in completing the downtown sculpture gallery project that resulted in seven permanent pedestals for rotating art displays. The pedestals were built using state local revitalization funds. Seven different pieces of art are on loan and being displayed on these pedestals. The art will rotate yearly. A people's choice vote will determine which art piece will be purchased and added to the city's permanent collection. I've always thought of this project as our sculpture garden, as I believe it's one of those places where the arts in Auburn will grow. We created Storefronts Auburn, four separate storefronts in downtown Auburn, showcasing six separate art installations. We had some fun as well. Downtown Auburn this last year played host to a new Friday noontime concert, Sound Bites a three-week summer art installation. And we had pianos on parade. And the most successful Auburn International Farmer's Market since the inaugural year. And we had such fun playing the piano or watching people play pianos decorated with art in the heart of our downtown. The activity at our senior center continues to grow. Now, this is a really diverse population. And folks that have their own opinions, as we all find out when we go down there on a monthly basis to hear what our seniors have to say. That's a really enjoyable time. But there, there, there's so many that go there. For instance, in the first, just the first six months of 2012, we served 11,169 meals to our seniors through the Catholic Community Services, one of the largest in the entire county. For veterans, we've also added additional veterans services at our senior center. Once a month staff from the King County Veterans Program and a DVA officer comes in. Twice a month a VFW service officer is at the senior center. And those resources are provided by the Veterans and Human Services Levy, which was helped out by the mayors of the city of Auburn and Enumclaw about seven years ago now. By the way, Green River Community College has been acknowledged to be within the top 15 military-friendly schools in the United States and continues to help veterans, not only in our community, but throughout the region. Speaking of veterans, we are the center of the largest region in the state for returning veterans. Auburn supports our veterans. Auburn holds the largest Veterans Day parade west of the Mississippi and because this year is the national kickoff for the commemoration of the Vietnam War, we're planning to dedicate a portion of this year's Veterans Day Parade to honor Vietnam veterans and to give them the welcome home parade they never received. You'll hear more about that as the plan unfolds. We need a place for veterans to get their benefits. We need a place for veterans and the people of Auburn 
to, in need of services to get help. That's why we're now engaged in working to build a Veterans and Human Service Center in our community. Just two months ago, at the U.S. Conference of Mayors, I was invited to chair a task force on returning veterans. For mayors, we solve problems. And for, in many ways, we look at veterans as being a problem. As I had suggested at the meeting the year before, mayors aren't a problem. Uh, mayors aren't a problem. Mayors are usually a problem. <laughs> veterans aren't a problem. Veterans are a solution. Veterans come back with $30,000 that they can use to go to school. They come back with the ability to get FHA and VA loans to take out some of those abandoned houses. They have priority ranking in jobs, in creating businesses. Veterans come with specific sets of skills, and not only that, they come back with a skill where they learned how to learn new skills. Veterans are an asset to our community, and we are now engaged in a plan to attract veterans to our community as another economic development tool. Veterans aren't a problem, they're a solution when you're in a recession. Now, we are working at the same time, and the reason I bring this up, we have this marvelous environmental park. Well, there was a veterans co uh, conservation group that helped us work on the 100-acre park. And we completed the first portion of the Environmental Park Wetland Trail Boardwalk Project. And in that project, we, we planted a 1,000 native trees and shrubs. Think about that, more than 100 area acres of Wetlands Park for our children and the children to come, and all the efforts that are going into that. And it's done by volunteer help, volunteer dollars, and grants that we've gotten from other places. Volunteers helped at about the same time during Clean Sweep to plant 34 new trees just on West Main Street as part of the annual Clean Sweep project. Now, this year's Clean Sweep is scheduled for May the 4th, and all volunteers are welcome to help beautify our city and to put cash into the project. Always have to try. <laughs> working together, and this is working together on grants, we obtained two new environmental restoration grants for $627,000. And we're continuing to work on some of the grants we got for $1.4 million from different agencies. We completed a supply contract with the Tacoma Public Utility for future water supply last year. We executed a water purchase agreement with Tacoma Water that, water that will give water to the City of Auburn in perpetuity. With that approval for a permanent future water supply for the build out of Auburn, we have secured our future in our water rights. <laughs> Mayor Booth. I know you were involved at the beginning of that project, too, and I thank you so much for your help there, too. It's been a long time coming. In 2012, there were 33 city projects in the construction phase that totaled over $74.2 million. We received a $2.3 million federal grant for the Auburn Way corridor improvements between Muckleshoot Plaza and Dogwood Street Southeast, and finally, started the project working together with the Muckleshoot tribe. That sounds so impersonal, but when you think about it in that area, that is so important to the children and the adults that live in that area to try to get across SR-164 or Auburn Way South. It took more than 15 years and really the intervention of the PTAs in that area to get the state legislature on their road to help us move forward on that project. Muckleshoot was a deciding influence as well, and we so much appreciate the project that will help all of our children with their future. Through the Puget Sound Regional Council, we received two federal grants, a million dollars for the design and right-of-way acquisition to improve the 277th corridor between Auburn Way North and L Street Northeast, and $560,000 for the West Valley Highway Overlay Project from 15th Street Northwest to 37th Street Northwest. <laughs> $500,000 of 
For those of you who have driven on West Valley Highway recently and noted a reduced speed limit, that is a big deal. The other one didn't sound that way, but think about this. We're talking about 277th from Auburn Way up toward the bridge going up to Kent. We're talking about that two-lane section that's never been made four lanes. Now this gives us the ability to design it out and buy the properties. It won't build a project, but it'll get us a lot further along than we ever have gotten so far. Now we also, as part of the neighborhood meeting program that I've been involved with for the last uh, five years now, conducted 12 neighborhood meeting evaluations this last year, putting in speed cushions and stop signs uh, throughout West Hill, Forest Villa neighborhood, uh, neighborhoods to the north and south. Working with our school district, we got additional funding for another safe routes to school, this time on Lee Hill. One of the most shocking things that I heard about, in a good way, talks about transit. We don't, Auburn doesn't think of itself as a, a great transit community. Auburn hosts 12 transit routes, two Sound Transit, one Pierce County Transit, nine Metro Transit routes, and almost 500 trans transit trips per day. Passengers can board at one of 200 bus stops or 37 bus shelter stops throughout Auburn. We have Metro, we have Sound Transit bus, we have Sounder trains, and we have Pierce Transit all here in Auburn. It is the only place in the region that all those agencies work out of one location. You'd think that second parking garage wouldn't be that difficult. <laughs> Just a little aside. Route 497 from Lakeland to the Auburn Station operates in partnership with the City of Auburn, Pierce Transit, and King County Metro and continues to grow in popularity. In 2012, it carried 45,000 riders. Auburn also hosts the popular Sounder commuter rail service. Ridership on the Sounder continues to grow, and we're looking at over 1,100 people a day using the station from Auburn. That is really something. We are now the highest in the system. Auburn is a truly regional hub in all the ways that you look at, whether it's entertainment, whether it's transportation, even for health care. Multicare took over the Auburn Medical Center on October 1st. And we're excited about partnering with Multicare to help our hometown hospital become the best regional medical center in South County. You might have noticed a change with animal control services as well. There's one more partnership I need to mention. That's our partnership with the Auburn Valley Humane Society. As of January 1st, 2013, Auburn took over pet licensing from King County. We contracted with a nonprofit Auburn Valley Humane Society to operate our very own animal shelter and its programs. And we now have, as a city employee, our very own Auburn Animal Control Officer out there patrolling Auburn streets and serving Auburn citizens' needs. Before January 1st, and, and we liked our Animal Control Officer, he was patrolling 300 square miles instead of 30. Having our own animal control officer is making a difference every single day in our community. If you're out there during this year and you hear something about licensing a pet and you have an inside pet, you need to make sure to pay for the pet license so that your pet will be taken care of if it gets out. That's very important to us all. <laughs> have you seen all, how all of our parts are woven together? We are so much more, so much richer for all that we're doing together. We're now the seventh largest city in King County, the seventh largest city in Pierce County, the 14th largest city in the state of Washington. We're no longer a small town, although sometimes we yearn for it, and you know how many times we've talked about it. 
It is time for us to recognize who we are as a city and the future that is in front of us. Sometimes we hear our people say, well, why can't we have, and you can fill in the blank. My response is because we as a community are not asking. It's not City Hall or the school district or the college or business. It's the community, the community united. Why don't we have our completed sound transit station with its second garage? Because we as a community have not asked for it, and we've earned the right to ask. Why haven't we seen the bypass built from State Highway 164 to State Highway 18? Because we as a community have not asked, and we've earned the right to ask. Why hasn't the state invested the redevelopment of Auburn Way South like it's done in so many other places? That's State Highway 164 because we, it isn't on the community agenda. As a community, we have not asked for these projects to become a reality, but we've earned a right to ask by our work, our faith in each other, and our commitment to the city of Auburn. Are we ready to put the bridge back over the railroad tracks that everybody's forgotten about, from 15th Street to 17th Street on the south side for business expansion? It's been a part of city planning since 1952. What about the need for a new Lee Hill Bridge and a host of other things that should be on a united Auburn agenda? We want restaurants, we want stores, we want so many more things. But we're the 14th largest city in the state of Washington and as a community united, we've earned the right to ask. Auburn believes in partnerships and we have many partnerships with agreed upon agendas. But the first agenda, the first priorities, have to be right here at home. It's time for us to take our place at that table. We've all talked about what we've wanted so long, it's time to take action. For our partners with the Muckleshoot Tribe, what are our joint needs? For the school district and the college, what is our needs? We've already seen instances where working together on issues we didn't even know existed a few years ago. We have made a difference for generations of children to come. What do we need here in Auburn, and how can we work on it together? For our business community, what are our needs right here at home in Auburn? Again, we have regional and state partnerships. Your city is a great believer in all of the partnerships. Your partner regional coalition is a good thing. We believe in strong regional partnerships. Still, what are the agendas and the needs for the Auburn business community here? What is your agenda for your needs here? What are the business sectors that need help and what kind? What are the businesses in the different parts of our community that are doing well and where are areas that need to be improved? What do you as a group want to take place here in the city of Auburn? What kind of expansion programs do you want to see? Are the arts and entertainment a viable part of what you consider to be a business future for the city of Auburn? Where are the corridors for business that need to be improved or different zoning or different regulations here in our city? Is there a benefit to the city and the tribe for 164 bypass? Other communities have been able to build roads with the state. We need to ask as a community, city and tribe, and the community together for our future. We've talked and talked and talked about it. We know if Auburn is going to have a future, we must fix the road. But what is Auburn's, not the region of the state, what is Auburn's agenda for roads? What do you believe are your basic needs for roads in the city of Auburn? And what do you want to do about it as a community? As I mentioned before, uh, the old dream of reconnecting A Street and C Street with the bridge from 15th to 17th Street for building expansion, for business expansion. And I looked at the comprehensive plan from 1952. I sent a copy out to all the council members to think about that idea, a bridge across the railroad tracks. It's been more than a half a century since that bridge was there. As a community, are we ready to take action? What are, what are our united needs? What is our united agenda? Why isn't our community center built? Other cities have been able to build community centers, aquatic centers, downtown centers. 
Shouldn't Auburn, the center of two counties, have a community center, her own great hall, as well as the Veteran and Human Service Center? Isn't it time to come together for the revitalization of the Auburn Way South Corridor for increased business? Are there new markets here and abroad that you want to access? And what would help you? What is standing in your way? What do you need to do together as a united agenda? It's time for us as a leading city in the region to take our place at the table. I ask the Auburn Area Chamber of Commerce to come forward with a specific 21st century agenda for Auburn business needs. I ask the Muckleshoot to join us with this grand alliance. I ask the Auburn School District, Green River Community College, our veterans group, our medical community, our faith community, our diverse communities, and all the different sectors that make this city so unique to come forward and bring your agenda forward for a 21st century city. Let's work on Auburn's needs, Auburn's future. We've worked hard for our regional coalitions and partnerships with regional needs, but first we need to be very clear on our needs. We do value our regional partners. We support our regional partners every time they, they come out with a, an agenda and we will continue to do so. But first, we must have that firm foundation to stand on that is our own unique agenda that we all agree upon, all the different parts of our city. All of us need to be looking at how we can bring forward an agenda that each and every one of our sectors agree upon and want to work on together. It is a time for a united Auburn agenda in our future. And we are at the crossroads in so many different ways. This is the point in time when we have earned the right to ask. If we've earned the right to ask, what are your questions? What are your needs? What do we need to do for that 21st century agenda? How do you see a 21st century Auburn? The time is now for us to act. The time is now for us to come together. I ask all of the partners to come together in the city of Auburn and create that agenda for 21st century Auburn. Thank you very much.